I will be presenting today um, a little bit about the different programs and the differences between them. And I'll show you some examples of coursework that we do here at the college. Um, following that, some information about the industry in general and some career, um, career information. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about the application process and then there'll be some time for questions and answers. So jewelry and gemology at George Brown is part of the School of Fashion in the Center for Arts, Design, and Information Technology, which also includes programs like graphic design, fashion, media, performing arts, and information technology. We are the largest school in North America that trains students in um, jewelry gemology industry. Um, so why choose you, George Brown? And um, one good answer to that is location. As you're probably well aware, we're in the city of Toronto, um, downtown, and the image there that you see on the left is Dundas Square, and that is the center of the jewelry industry in Toronto and also in Canada. Lots of businesses there, lots of employers, uh, mentors, opportunities to purchase supplies and materials, and so that's only a very short five, ten minute subway ride from our campus that you see on the right. Um, and so that's a really great place for the school to be in relation to the industry itself. Um, in terms of our four programs that you see here, we, um, before I go into the differences between them, a little bit of background is that the jewelry programs were initially developed over 50 years ago by a German master goldsmith. And um, that emphasis was on traditional hand skills and very strict industry standards to provide the jewelry sector with a skilled workplace ready graduates to work as bench jewelers. Now today, of course, 50 years later, we have a lot of experience in this industry and um, one of the things we continue to pass on is those time-honored traditions of goldsmithing skills, but also we assist students in applying the latest digital technologies for a career in today's evolving jewelry technology industries. So our four different programs, we have three in jewelry and we have one in gemology. Gemology is a one-year certificate, that means two semesters. And um, in this program, you learn how to analyze, identify, and classify various natural and synthetic gem materials, from diamonds to pearls. Jewelry appraisal is also taught in this program. So gemology can kind of be thought of as a more scientific approach to gems and jewelry. In the jewelry side, we have a range of certificate diploma programs, the three that you see there where you learn goldsmithing techniques, gem setting, repair, model making, um, jewelry design, history, drawing and rendering, as well as computer-aided design and manufacture, or what we call CAD CAM. So the jewelry programs are really very hands-on. Um, they're technical programs where you're learning to make jewelry. And um, in the case of the jewelry arts program, the three-year diploma, you also learn to design in addition to making. So people often ask um, about the ways you can move between these three programs in jewelry. And this chart up here shows in purple we have the jewelry essentials, which is the one-year certificate. In orange we have jewelry methods, and in green we have jewelry arts. The Jewelry Essentials is a very um, kind of an introduction, right, to the to the field of jewelry, and um, it's you're going to get the basic information, and it may be suitable for someone who's going into retail, but it's not enough to actually learn goldsmithing and um, or to be a designer. The Jewelry Methods program, two years, is purely technical. So you're not designing anything, you're not learning any design skills, but you're making industry projects according to uh, drawings that are provided by teachers. The Jewelry Arts program, the most um, advanced one there, is um, the most comprehensive, and so it includes all the technical stuff that you get in methods, but it also includes design, and, um, and so that you're making <clears throat> by the end, by the third year, you're making projects which you have designed 
and brought to life in precious metals and gems. So it is possible to transfer from one of the other programs into another. And you'll see the possible uh, ways of doing that there. One, um, if you were in Jewelry Essentials, for example, after the first year, providing you meet the requirements, which are at the bottom of the screen there, really that you have to maintain a 2.7 grade point average and a minimum 70% grade in two of the courses, a goldsmithing course and a designing color course that everybody takes. So providing you have that, you can transfer from the Jewelry Essentials into either the Methods program or the Arts program. If you are starting out in the Methods program, then you can transfer to the Arts program, or you would continue in the, into the second year of the Methods program. And lastly, if you're in the Arts program to start, you're going to move all the way through. But again, in order to, um, to be promoted at year two, you have to maintain that point average and a 70% grade in the two courses. Okay. Um, our programs are designed with very integrated uh, courses that balance both theory and hands-on practice. We have field education such as competitions, exhibitions, sales, field trips, guest speakers, and we also have a 120-hour internship course that's incorporated into our curriculum. We also conduct a lot of job placements through the academic year and we keep very close uh, contact with our graduates and alumni. The course subjects themselves in all of the programs can be found on our website under the pages for each program. Um, there are, in terms of a time commitment, there are about 20 to 24 hours of class time per week and classes start as early as 8 o'clock in the morning and most classes are usually done by 4 p.m. Occasionally they might run to 6 p.m. And students, on top of those 20 to 24 hours of class time, students are expected to spend an equal amount of time um, outside of class for completing their coursework, studying, homework, and a lot of that has to be done in the call, in our labs and studios. It's not the kind of program where you can read about it and gain those skills. You really have to be here on campus using the facilities that are here to get your coursework done. In terms of our facilities and teaching, um, as I mentioned, the college has um, one of North America's largest and its best equipped jewelry schools. And with the pressure of class size getting larger, we use digital technologies in classroom and the use of video, um, which is very helpful. So here we see on the left hand side, individual instruction that happens. A demonstration class is on the right hand of the screen where um, we use the aid of um, video cameras, close-up video cameras, so that a teacher can be making a demo and reviewing it on the screen, and in many cases having a recorded version that you can look at um, after the demonstration. Students have access to equipment, benches, and tools to accomplish the project work and to develop their skills. And one unique function, or one unique aspect of our programs is that we have precious metals and some gemstones available on a credit system. So it means you can work with precious metals and um, like silver and gold, the college will hold on to your work um, until two years after you graduate, it gives you a chance to um, earn some money, pay back um, the, the, the precious metal and get um, the next slide here shows our gemology lab. Um, and in all programs, classroom teaching is balanced with lab time and individual instruction is balanced with group collaborative work. So here we see students testing gemstones under polariscopes and microscopes. Um, after 50 years of teaching gemology, George Brown has amassed a significant collection of gemstones and gem materials which students have access to for testing in the laboratory. And in fact, the labs are so well equipped, we also provide our facilities to the Canadian Gemological Association and the British Gemological Association as a location for practical exams. Here you'll see uh, some of the more dirtier work, students polishing, 
George Brown graduates are known for polishing. They're known for the quality of silver and gold finish that we get. And it's important to know um, that practice and repetition is essential to get these skills. Um, it can be a real challenge, of course, for today's full-time students who often have to work part-time jobs. Based on many, many years of observation, we really recommend that students only work part-time um, 8 to 12 hours a week. And once you're over, when you, students who are working 15 hours and more really suffer um, with their grades and their accomplishments in the program. Um, in addition to all this handwork, we also do digital work. Digital technology, not only used in the classrooms, like those overheads um, of filming the instructors and demos, but also for jewelry design and for jewelry production. So CAD CAM is the most quickly changing area of the programs. We teach uh, Rhino software in the facilities, and we have CNC milling that you see on the right, and, um, and 3D printing. Here you'll see um, a piece that um, shows the combination of digital and analog processes used to create this gold, sapphire, and diamond ring. Designing is done on the screen with special software. Milling or 3D printing is used to output the model in a wax-like material. And then traditional casting, hand finishing, and gem setting is used to complete the ring. I mentioned we also have field education. So this is an elective course in the last semester of the jewelry methods and the jewelry arts programs. It's 120 hours, <laughs> excuse me, of unpaid or paid working in the within the GTA, the, the um, Toronto area. And this is an amazing opportunity. Get some job experience, add to your portfolio, make some really valuable business connections and perhaps, and often, actually get a part-time or full-time paying job after leaving the college. So some examples of employer and field education placements are gem dealers, bench work, retail, manufacturing, and administrative work within a jewelry business. Um, in the past, we've had businesses like Myerson's, Mindham Fine Jewelry, uh, Made You Look, Rolex and the Dupuy Auction House as partners. Speaking about partnerships, we also have some international opportunities here in jewelry and gemology. Um, these are three institutions which we partner with. Um, at IA, which is the Copenhagen School of Design and Technology in Denmark, there's opportunities for students to go on an exchange semester. We have some of their students come to us and our students will go there. We also have articulation agreements with partner universities like Birmingham City University in Birmingham, England and the University of the Arts in London. And these uh, agreements give our grads advanced standing towards gaining a bachelor's degree after finishing their diplomas at George Brown. A degree completion can be completed in as little as one year after George Brown diploma. So now I'm going to show you a little bit about our faculty, a couple of slides of our faculty. And we have a total of 14 um, faculty. We have four full-time and 10 part-time. And they offer a really broad perspective on the industry. Faculty have worked as bench jewelers, as designers, custom goldsmiths, art jewelers, entrepreneurs, gallery managers, and retail um, managers. Um, on our right, Professor Shona Kearney. She began her career um, working with some of Toronto's top studio goldsmiths and designers, and her enthusiasm for teaching brought her back to George Brown as a part-time instructor in 99 and a full-time member, uh, faculty member since 2004. Katharina Moller on the right, uh, sorry, on your left, has been working as a goldsmith since graduating from George Brown's Jewelry Arts and the Gemology programs. And her outstanding jewelry designs have received two prestigious De Beers Diamond Today Awards. Katharina is an accredited gemologist and also a fellow of the GEMA, British Gemological Association. Two more of our full-time faculty. Martha Glenny's career ranges over a broad area of the jewelry field, including 10 years as a self-employed craftsperson and an international exhibition career. She's taught um, jewelry at the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design as well as Nunavut Arctic College. Wing Kei Chan received her education in Hong Kong 
in the United States and in Canada. She earned her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the University of Texas at Austin and a Master of Fine Arts degree from Nova Scotia College of Art and Design. And yours truly, speaking to you, this is some of my work. Um, I also have an international background in terms of an undergraduate from NASCAD U and a master's from the National College of um, Design in Dublin, Ireland, as well as um, two years spent apprenticing, apprenticing in Barcelona, Spain. So now on to some examples of jewelry coursework. So you see kind of what the students actually are, will produce in each of the years. Um, here you see basic goldsmithing projects. So we've got um, sawing and filing techniques, soldering and hollow construction of very precise geometric forms like this sphere, cube or cone and the cylindrical box. So in the, this is work that you would do in the first year of any of the jewelry programs. We start you out in copper and brass before you move on to precious metals like silver and gold. The intermediate and advanced goldsmithing projects, like these ones, are what you can expect to do in your second year, whether that's in the methods program or the arts program. Um, examples include hollow ring construction, chains, very complicated catches that you see on the bottom left. Um, so again, more developed soldering and precision skills. So on to some gemstones, gem setting and industry skills projects. These are very um, set projects. So you'll see gem setting styles up on the top. Everybody has two levels of gem setting courses. Um, and industry standard projects that would happen in the jewelry methods program like this ring, gold ring shank and crown setting that you see in the bottom left. Now a lot of jewelry is made um, through the casting technique, which means that a model has to be made first. Very often in wax, carved by hand, which you see on the left, or more, um, more commonly now, cut by CNC, mill or 3D printed in a wax like resin. So we um, teach both of these because we think it's still very important to have a sense of um, how wax can be carved and worked, but also how it can be put digitally where you can get a lot of precision, um, as you can see, like with some of the patterns on the pieces on the right. We also teach um, production techniques. So jewelry, um, that you're going to be making a uh, large quantity of, like say, two to five hundred pieces of the same. So production courses are um, where you're learning these more mass production manufacturing and finishing techniques. Sometimes we have an external client that will come to the college to produce a piece, and sometimes the college itself is the client, which you see with these pins here. This is George Brown, in the, what we're, the college is named after. He was a 19th century newspaper man and a father of Canadian Federation. And this was pin, silver pin was made by the students um, to commemorate 50 years of the college being in operation last year. And here's a student project from our jewelry arts program um, whereby more advanced techniques were used to create this production piece. So the technical drawing on the left and then the output um, using laser sintering and 3D printing. So the colored ones are 3D printed and dyed nylon. And then up in the top, you see different finishes of printed steel, printed bronze and cast silver and gold. So it gives a, a way of producing lots of different pieces of the same piece, but in different materials at different price points. Drawing and rendering, still very important, both hand sketching, but also um, computer rendering. And we, again, just like the wax model, we teach both analog and digital versions of these. And gemology, although, as I've mentioned, we have a gemology program, we also teach basic gemology to all jewelry students. It's really important that someone who's making jewelry understands what you can or cannot do with certain gemstones. And now I'm going to show you a little bit of jewelry arts students' work. All of this work that we're going to look at here is 
um, from the final year of the Jewelry Arts program. So these students would be in their fifth and sixth semesters. And some very creative um, forms of jewelry. Students in this um, level alloy their gold, and then they use forming, fabrication, and sometimes some casting to con construct these very advanced projects. Um, here you see some earrings that are in gold, pearls, silver, and enamel. The piece that is on the right, enamel is another technique that is taught here at college, um, where, where colored glass is fused onto the surface of metal to create very decorative and um, dazzling effects. And all sorts of gemstones are incorporated into their designs in the third year from raw crystals that you see on the right, sapphires, diamonds, pearls, and even beach pebbles, the piece of the necklace on the right. Students in, um, in the jewelry arts program develop a thesis or a theme for their final year and create a series of six to eight pieces in their, in their final collections. And these collections are shown at a public exhibition each year. Um, we hold this at, um, um, at, at TIP, the Toronto International Film Festival in downtown Toronto, very public venue that gets a lot of exposure. And we also host our annual awards ceremony, which you can see the group up on the right. And the awards are sponsored by our industry partners, um, both cash and in-kind awards to the most deserving students. And at this final event, this is the climax and we're actually preparing for it right now because we have one next week, um, a lot of the industry will come out and scout for the best talent to, to look for, to employ. So yeah, we're going to post a link to that um, here on the chat side of the page. And I'm going to go on and talk to you a little bit about careers. So gold, uh, sorry, jewelry is a really broad industry. There's lots of ways to enter the industry. Um, as I've mentioned, we are really focused on the making of jewelry, but that doesn't mean that all of our grads end up being makers. Some of them do, but, but and some of them don't. But um, knowing how the jewelry is made and being able to make it is a really important aspect to, to gaining a foothold into the jewelry industry. So. There's careers in the mentoring sector, in the wholesale sector, and in retail. Opportunities are um, bench goldsmith, uh, jewelry designer, uh, studio goldsmith, which is more of an um, independent craftsperson, entrepreneur. And then often all students will go, or graduates will go into specialty trades, whether that's gem setting, or repair, or finger casting. Um, when I mentioned about the, 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 the jewelry industry being broad, we kind of categorize it into fine jewelry, which is gold and diamonds and gemstones, um, the expensive materials, fashion jewelry, um, which are uh, alternative and non-precious materials, and then bridge jewelry, which falls in between. And our graduates work in all of those different areas of jewelry. In gemology, also, um, careers in the manufacturing, wholesale, or retail sector. Um, graduates can become buyers, graders and sorters of gemstones and diamonds, and appraisal. Um, it's one of the wonderful things about the gemology program is that there's a significant amount of appraisal in the second half of gemology, and there's also opportunities for further study after taking gemology to um, to become a certified appraiser here at the college. Um, successful students. Now, one of the things I didn't mention what, that I did too is people often ask, you know, can I, should I, or can I do both programs, do a jewelry program and a gemology program? And interestingly, we note that a lot of the successful students who have both programs certainly have a leg up in the industry when they're looking for employment. Um, but in addition to having those two educational
It looks like I'm connected. Yeah. OK, sorry about that little connection problem. So I was talking about what successful jewelry students have. I mentioned the eyesight, high degree of manual dexterity, meaning do you like to work with your hands? Are you OK getting your hands dirty? Um, you don't have to have a lot of a background in, in hand skills, but you know, how are you at building an IKEA bookcase, for example? <laughs> if you can do that, we can train you to make jewelry. Um, you want to have some mechanical inclinations, but and patience is very important. Jewelry takes a long time to make, um, and learning to make it has a lot of um, requires a lot of patience. You want to have good teamwork and collaboration skills, some drawing skills, but again, we teach you drawing here, but you want to have, feel comfortable drawing. And most importantly, the ability, while you're a student here, to spend many hours working in the studio. In terms of gemology students, again, good eyesight, um, certainly can be have corrective glasses, but um, color blindness will present a very big problem. Um, part of gem classification is based in color and you're spending a lot of time looking through um, instruments like microscopes. You also want to have a scientific mind and good memory skills for facts and figures. When it comes time to write your um, exams for gemology, which are written after you complete the program with the, um, in association with the Canadian Gemological Association, it's a lot of facts and figures to, to um, to give back in those exams. Um, and like the jewelry programs, patience, initiative, visual acuity, good with teamwork and collaboration, and the ability, again, to spend many hours in our gemstone lab, in our labs, um, reviewing gemstones. The more experience you have with the gemstones, the more successful you will be. So on to um, some specifics here. Tuition costs and other fees. In our jewelry programs, the tuition you'll see up there is a domestic fee. A domestic is 6117 An international fee is 14330 Those are for one full year or two semesters. Um, your material, material and lab fees are included in those costs. So that includes, for jewelry, includes a toolkit in both year one and year two and year three course packs with supplies and materials. So those things you walk away with when, as a graduate. You're going to leave the programs with a tool, with all of your hand tools um, to move into the beginning of your career. Other under there is um, textbooks, supplies, and materials. And specifically, as we're working in precious metals, in year one, you can expect an additional cost of about $300. In year two, about $600. And in year three, in the jewelry arts program, you can be anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000, depending on the amount of gold you choose to use in your projects. Gemology fees, there they are again. In domestic is um, $5,100. International is $14,330. And um, the material fees here, um, again, include some tools and some materials. And textbooks run a little bit higher in gemology. There's more reading involved, and you're up at about $700 in textbooks for the full year. Lastly, we're going to look at application cycle. So applications for September open in November. Um, and I know that you're interested in having your application assessed as quickly as possible. And our statistics. Um, show that two areas of slowdown are transcripts arriving at the college or applicants completing testing. So your application is stalled until this step is complete. Um, I forgot to mention there, so as a domestic student, you would be applying through OCAS, the Ontario College Application Service. As an international student, it's best to apply directly to George Brown through the online application system. It is possible to go through OCAS, but the OAS is recommended. 
Then George Brown notifies you of any outstanding items like English transcripts or grade 12 English. Now, once an applicant has met all the criteria, criteria notification of acceptance or a wait list or a, decl or a decline will, uh, will come to you. And you need to make a confirmation of that offer. So in, as a domestic student, you are con you're going to confirm that offer through OCAS. So by May 1st, for offers issued between February and April. And for offers after May 1st, you have to confirm within three weeks of receiving your offer. Now, for an international student, you're going to confirm that offer in George Brown's online application system, unless you applied through OCAS. And international applicants have four weeks to pay their first semester fees and accept the offer. It's not until you accept the offer that your place in one of the programs is held and secured. So you can check your application status online through StuView. And there is a, um, I just have a screenshot here to show you of the, the dashboard of StuView where um, it runs through the, um, the different steps. So this is a place where you want to get familiar going to in StuView. Um, once you have applied to the college and you have a student number and a PIN, you can access the StuView which means that you can see where your application might be held up or, or at what stage it is in the process. The registration cycle, once you have been accepted or you've accepted your offer, um, registration packages are sent out in June and registration happens online in July, usually in early July. Um, you go online again through StuView to do all of your registration. Um, it's very straightforward because in the first um, semester, or sorry, the first year of all four programs, there are no electives. So you want to click on the box of every single course that comes up and then you're registered. We have orientation one week before class starts. And then class always starts on the Tuesday after our Labor Day holiday. So that's the first Tuesday of uh, sorry, first Tuesday of September. Um, and it's very important that you arrive on the first day of classes. Um, so much happens in that first day um, in terms of getting set up and getting benches and getting tools that you really don't want to arrive late for that part of our, your education. So, um, I want to just thank you for attending, and um, we'll open up now for some questions. No. So, on your on your screen, the little microphone there. Um, the icon second to the left, if you click on that, you can open your microphone, unmute, and ask verbal questions. Or you can ask in the chat by typing in on the right-hand side. Hi, Paul. Hi. Um, nice to meet you. I um, wonder if you could just throw up the tuition slide one more time. Is that okay? I sure can. Are you for gemology or for jewelry? Uh, jewelry arts. Okay. Thank you. Just like the back here. There we go. That's great. Thanks so much. Yeah. Did you have any questions about any of the specifics there? Um, I have a couple of questions, but I'll let somebody else <laughs> go first. I just want to organize. Thank you. Sure. Sure. So you'll notice there on the chats, on the right-hand chat side, um, we just posted the, a virtual tour of, of the facilities. So that'll give you a chance to go in and take a look at our facilities and where you would be studying, building jewelry. Uh, it takes you a virtual tour through all of the, the labs and classrooms. Hi, Paul. Um, Hi. I'm wondering, uh, uh, there on the, there's a, a questionnaire and um, something that we need to like uh, exhibit our drawing skills on. Do we 
need to send that in still or a portfolio or anything like that? No, um, thank you for asking that question. That, the guidelines for getting into the Jewelry Arts program changed this year. Um, there is no longer, uh, it's no longer necessary to have, uh, to, to submit a portfolio, and it's also no longer necessary to submit the questionnaire. Um, what we have changed there, so you can apply directly to Jewelry Arts without, without either of those things. Um, I believe they have been taken down off of our website. Um, did, did you see them there recently? Uh, I saw them there before I applied, so um, I, I, I have my acceptance and everything, but I was wondering if you still wanted that from me. So. No, I mean, okay, so. no, we do not want that. Um, so we, yeah, we've made a few changes this year so that now um, you can apply directly into Jewelry Arts, and then there's just some uh, requirements of the in year one to maintain a, a high enough GPA um, so that you can be promoted into the second year of Jewelry Arts. Okay, great, great. Okay. Yeah, last time I saw them was February, so I'm not sure if they're still up. But thank you very much. Okay, thanks. And I'm going to double check that to make sure that, that can be confusing. I know. Awesome. <laughs> thanks. For the study abroad option, is there a specific semester in the three year program where that is advised, or is it at any point? Okay, Taylor. Um, so, for the study abroad option, this is a fairly new aspect that we have um, that we've been able to set up in the programs. And the ideal semester is the, the fourth semester, so the winter of your second year of studies. Um, that's when we have an ex the exchange program with um, the Copenhagen School of Design. Um, and things are growing in this area, so there may be other opportunities um, for exchange at other schools, but currently for the exchange program, it's just the, the school in Copenhagen. I hope that answers your question. You're welcome. Okay. Hi there. Does anyone else have any questions they would like answered? Um, I've got one more. Oh, no, sorry. She's uh, there. I'll let you answer that first. <laughs> okay. uh, from Eunice, are international students eligible for the exchange program abroad? Yes, they are. Um, absolutely. And um, you know, I think I I'll also mention, um, in addition to the, the exchange opportunities that I mentioned earlier on, um, we also have more opportunities now for once you finish at George Brown, whether in the Jewelry Methods Diploma Program or the Jewelry Arts Diploma Program, or even the Gemology Certificate, we now have partnerships where you can go abroad and complete a uh, either a, a Bachelor's of Design degree from the Jewelry Program or a Bachelor of Science degree from the Gemology Program and you get full credit for the full amount of time that you've studied at George Brown. So for example, if you did the two-year program, you get two years of a, a, a credit and if you've done the Gemology Program, you get one full year of credits. So that's a really incredible opportunity to move along and, and if a degree is something that you're looking for in the future. You're welcome. Unfortunately, I won't be able to attend the first week of classes and the orientation. How can I get on track as soon as possible? That is unfortunate. Um, as I said, we really discourage um, students arriving a week late. Um, so much content is, is in that first week in addition to tools. And um, it really, there really isn't an opportunity for um, getting you on track unless you attend that first week. Um, 
So I encourage you to try to change your plans and be here on, um, not necessarily if you really can't make the orientation that is before the Labor Day holiday, that is one area where, yes, the, the, it's not as critical, but it really is critical to be here on the Tuesday morning after the Labor Day Monday. So that's the first Tuesday of September. It's actually September 3rd this year. I wasn't sure of the date. So September 3rd is a, a critical day to be on campus when classes start. You're welcome. Um, I just have one more question. Yes. Um, how do how do you um, handle uh, absences? Because I know that um, that at GBC there's a lot of people coming in that are pursuing a secondary career or um, other options and wanting to learn new skills. Um, but if they need to be absent for like a week or so due to another career pursuit, how does how does the program handle that? Um, Sorry for such a specific question. <laughs> all right. Um, so obviously we discourage that. Absolutely. You know, like um, although there are a lot of students who are coming for uh, a second career, um, they're usually not maintaining the first one at the same time. Okay. So um, we um, we really it, it becomes very very problematic, and we see students actually. Um, being unsuccessful, taking a whole week away from classes is, is very problematic. You have to understand that there's only 14 weeks of classes in a semester, and a um, great deal happens um, in a week. Um, so missing an entire week is, you know, of course there's um, medical emergencies that happen, which we make a comment for, but um, we really encourage students to, to, to be able to spend the 24 hours of class time, 20 to 24, and then the additional 20 to 24 here on campus completing the work. I can't really stress it enough that um, it's very difficult to be successful without being here and, and, and attending. Thank you very much. Uh, another question from Eunice, would you be able to give the salary range for someone who graduates from jewelry arts, starting out as well as a little later down the line? Yeah, it's very, um, this is a very broad question um, because the jewelry industry is um, um, so varied. You know, we have students who will start out um, uh, who could be starting out in, in retail or in a bench jewelry position. We have students who would be entrepreneurs who want to be independent craftspeople and designers. So the range is um, very broad. I would say, you know, if, um, often a student would be in a manufacturing type position with the bench jewelers, you're looking at between $15 and $20 an hour to start with. Now that can change very quickly. Um, it really all depends on the, um, the proficiency and skill level, hand skill level. That's what's really coveted the most in the jewelry industry. People who have the proficiency, the speed, and the um, ability for precision in their handwork. And those people uh, progress very quickly through the industry. In addition to that, um, having gemology certification, um, because, gemo uh, because jewelry is a, is a field that does not have certification, but gemology does, um, having both of those um, can, can, be, um, can increase your, your, your salary potential immensely. You're very welcome. Any other questions?
All right. Well, I'd like to just say thank you very much for joining us for this information session. And I hope you, um, oh, I think we have a, one more question coming in from Rebecca. So we'll wait. You're very welcome. Um, so thank you, everyone. And um, I look forward to uh, hopefully seeing you in September.